hike, don't move without reason. Every slow drift, every violent burst, and every refusal is shaped by a biological engine older than the waters themselves. Some days they hunt, some days they sit like stone, and the difference between the two isn't a mystery, it's metabolism. This is Pike Biology Explained, Season 2, Episode 1. Fish physiologists describe a predator's metabolism as a strict energy budget, oxygen in, energy out, and a limited amount of power to spend. Research led by Professor Stephen Cook highlights three key parts of that engine. The standard metabolic rate, the minimum cost of staying alive, breathing, repairing, maintaining cells, active metabolic rate, the cost of movement, chasing, ambushing, fighting the rod. And then there's aerobic scope, the gap between the two. And, as Professor Anders Nilsson work shows, the space that fuels every strike, chase, and moment of recovery. Every decision a pike makes fits inside this window. In winter, Telemetry studies, including work by Dr. Peter Nilsson, show sharply reduced oxygen use in cold water. Movement slows, digestion slows. A single meal can sustain a winter pike for days. And in post-spawn spring and autumn, across cool water, predator research shows metabolic efficiency rising sharply in cool to moderate temperatures, especially through the low to mid-teens. In this range, digestion improves, muscle contracts faster, and energy converts more efficiently into growth. And in warmer water, summertime, speeds muscle function, reflexes sharpen, prey move more. In early summer, pike often strike harder than any other time of the year. But as temperatures climb further, the physiology reverses Warm water holds less oxygen, maintenance costs rise sharply, and large pike lose the spare capacity they rely on. This is why many biologists and fisheries urge caution during hot spells. Not because pike vanish, but because their recovery margins shrink dramatically. Studies show juvenile pike consume several percent of their body weight per day under ideal conditions. But as pike mature, maintenance becomes expensive. Only a fraction of the energy they eat becomes new muscle. As Professor David Noakes' research highlights, large essacids invest most of their energy into staying alive, not growing. And telemetry shows sharp metabolic spikes during feeding, followed by long periods of near stillness. Pike aren't grazers, they're specialists evolved for rare, high-value meals separated by long recovery periods. Everything about a pike's design serves one purpose, efficiency. A low drag body, white muscle fibers for instant acceleration, stationary hunting to conserve fuel, predator ecology, including work by Cook and Nelson, consistently show that ambush predators move only when the payoff exceeds the cost. Now, over the years, I've heard anglers often say, but on my water, pike hit baits all day. And in certain environments, they do. According to studies in predator energetics, strike frequency is heavily influenced by prey encounter rate and not hunger. High prey density creates more low cost chances to strike. A pike might hit eight times and only ingest one real meal. The biology hasn't changed, but the conditions have. Now what is interesting is dead baits. Optimal foraging theory, supported by Nilsson's work, shows predators accept food only when the energy gained exceeds the energy cost of digestion. Pike run a rapid sensory check, vibration, movement, scent, shape, 
If any cue feels unnatural, they abandon. During digestion, metabolic scope narrows. The fish may investigate food, your dead bait, for example, but it just cannot ingest it yet. Research shows pike shift prey preference across the year based on fat content, protein, and ease of digestion. What looks like hesitation is a predator running the maths of survival. Pike aren't unpredictable. They're economical. Every strike, every refusal, and every moment of stillness is a calculation shaped by physiology. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss episode two, where we look at how pike choose their territory, the ownership and the micro migration. This is Pike Biology Explained. And until next time, stay hooked. I'm Stu, a British military veteran and predator angling runs deep in my veins. It's about wild waters, the chase and a way of life. If you enjoyed this adventure, hit subscribe. And if you want to go even further, join my channel memberships for raw, unfiltered predator sessions and exclusive films you won't see anywhere else. This is Hooked on Predator Fishing. And until next time, stay hooked.